killed and injured and their families and friends. We pay tribute to the emergency services who responded with such care and such courage, and we stand with the Government in our determination to defeat those who would bring terror to our streets. Mr Speaker, there has been a lot of progress on tackling domestic violence, but still every year hundreds of thousands of women are victims. Many of the perpetrators are sent to prison, rightly in my view. Now the Justice Secretary has embarked on a sentencing review and has suggested that short sentences don't work. But it's often not rehabilitation that's needed in domestic violence cases, but a very clear message to the perpetrator that it mustn't be repeated, and a very clear message to the victim that the justice system takes this seriously, and that's what a short sentence can do. Can the Prime Minister confirm that the sentencing review will not stop magistrates giving short prison sentences for domestic violence? Well, I think the Honourable Lady, first of all, can I thank her for what she says about the anniversary and the tribute she rightly paid to the emergency services who played an unbelievably brilliant role on that day and the many people who, who helped them. I think she's absolutely right to raise the issue of domestic violence. For too many years, this was an issue that police forces and prosecutors didn't deal with properly. And to be fair to the last uh, government, good progress has been made over the last decade uh, with this issue. I, I do agree that there are occasions when short sentences are required, and indeed uh, the Lord Chancellor takes uh, exactly the same view. He said in the speech, very important, to, uh, very important to read the speech and not just the headline, he said, uh, in, good. in my opinion, abolishing all short sentences altogether would be a step too far. We need penalties for the antisocial recidivist, and we do need to make sure that magistrates have that power. But the review is important to try and make sure that we get this right. Well, I thank the Prime Minister for, for that reassurance. It is reassuring that the Lib Dem promise that they made um, in the election is not to, going to be carried forward. And can I congratulate him? Uh, can I, can, I mean, I notice the, the, the Justice Secretary is not looking very cheerful. Perhaps he should go down to Ronnie Scott's to cheer himself up. But, but can, I, can, can I congratulate the Prime Minister for, instead of listening to his new partner, listening to his mother, because in the election he told us that his mother was a magistrate and that she told him magistrates need the powers uh, of short sentences. Quite often it is the right thing for somebody not to listen to their new partner but to listen to their mother. So I'm glad he's done this on that occasion. Can I turn to something else mentioned in the election campaign? In the election campaign, he said any minister who came to him with cuts to frontline services, uh, he said, and I quote, will be sent straight back to their department to go away and think again. Does that apply to the Home Secretary? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, can I say, there are, I'm, in my experience, is very few people more cheerful than the Lord Chancellor. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> he's... He is celebrating his 40th anniversary in this house. He likes to uh, he likes to point out that he, he was elected to this house before the Chancellor of the Exchequer was actually born, um, and uh, he brings enormous experience and good humour to all our councils. I'm delighted. Um, I'm delighted the right honourable lady has brought up the issue of, of my mother, um, who who served on the Newbury bench uh, for for many many years. I have to say, one of the biggest challenges she had. Uh, and the most often, as well as, as, well as me. <laughs> and, one of the, and one of the reasons she needed to hand out so many short sentences was mostly to badly behave CND protesters outside Greenham Common. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so, she was... I don't know whether she was there. Anyway, if... Uh, if, if, the, if the Right Honourable Lady wants to have more episodes of Listen with Mother, I'm very happy uh, at any time she would like. In terms of the Home Office, of course we have to make savings. We have to make savings across government. It's not going to be easy, but absolutely we must make sure that we do everything we can to protect the front line. But I simply don't believe, when you look at the Home Office budget, there aren't examples of waste and inefficiency and things that we can do better. And I would say to the Honourable Lady this. She went into the election calling for 20% cuts in every department. That was her policy, a policy of 5% five, four, five cuts each year. Ours is 6% cuts each year. So these are Labour cuts as well. Yeah. Yeah. Harriet Harman. Well, 
we went into the election very clear to collect to, to protect pre, uh, police numbers. We, I'm asking him a straightforward question, which he has so far failed to answer. Because at Prime Minister's questions, he was asked by my honourable friend, the member for Westminster North, this very simple, straightforward question. Will there be fewer police officers at the end of this Parliament compared to now? That's what she asked him. He skirted round her question and didn't answer it. Will he answer it now? Yes. Of course they're going to be difficult decisions, but, but let me... Let me a, a, very, a very simple question was put to the Shadow Home Secretary before the last election. The question... Just wait for it, wait for it. Andrew Neil. Andrew Neil. Can you guarantee, if you form the next government, that police numbers won't fall? Alan Johnson, can you confirm that? Alan Johnson, no. Oh. 